When I started my company, I was broke. I started it with no money. Now, 10 grand a month, when you don't have any money, is a lot of money. Money is a tool. If you don't use it, it's useless. You, you mentioned a little bit of math and, and profits. So when you're starting your business, how did you manage the money that inflates? This is a money, money question. How did you start managing the money? You start making profits. You started getting customers. You start, you start getting people to buy your service. Yep. Mentally speaking, and financially speaking, how did you reinvest that money? How did you spend that money? How, how did it go for you? What, what, what was your process? Well, I always tell people, if you want to get rich, stay broke. What that means is, when I started my company, I was broke. I started it with no money. Matter of fact, there were times I had to park my car four blocks away so the repo guy wouldn't get it because I needed a car. Um, and so ultimately, it's all about how, like when I would park my car four blocks away, it was just common sense. Like, I don't want them to take it. If they come by my house, they'll take it. So I parked it away. Well, why did I do that? Well, because I needed a car. So common sense is obviously part of it, but ultimately, when it boils down to it, you just have to, it, it was more of a, it was more of a tenacity thing. Now, what was your question again? Yeah, you're getting money, when you, you get money oh, yeah, coming oh, yeah. in. How, how, do you, how do you flow that money? Yeah, yeah, because this is important. So what I did was, so I was broke, and ultimately, I finally got it to where I got about 10 grand a month. Now, 10 grand a month, when you don't have any money, is a lot of money. And so I'm thinking, man, 10 grand a month, this is awesome. Yeah. I, I could have went and got a better apartment. I could have started buying furniture. I could have started eating steak instead of Top Ramen. I could have went and got a nicer car. Yeah. But when I got to 10,000, I took five of it and I hired somebody. And I said, you and I have to get back to 10. And so now there was two of us to get back to 10. And then when I got back to 10, I'd grab five of it and I'd hire a third person. And when I got back to 10, I'd take five of it and I'd hire another person. So ultimately, I just kept reinvesting the money by taking the money and staying broke and putting it back into the business yeah. to scale and grow. Right. And then, you know, it would take a month to get back to 10, then, you know, a, 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 a week to get back to 10, then a day to get back to 10. Yeah. And pretty soon, if I didn't do that, because yeah. most people, they get a scarcity mindset. They're broke for so long that when they finally start making a little money, they want to hold on to it and they want to hold it. When in reality, money is a tool. If you don't use it, it's useless. So fortunately, and again, I, no one taught me to do it. I just inherently- Instinctively. Yeah, you did it was an instinct. I just, I, you know, once I started making a little money, I took it and I hired somebody. And then when I made a little more, I took it and I hired somebody. So I just kept reinvesting. And I didn't know to do that, I just did that. And looking back, it's like, that's one of the things that helped. Too many, too many people are broke for so long when starting a business or starting an MLM or starting you know, a new in, uh, uh, venture. Yep. That as soon as they get a little bit of success, their mind switches and they're like, I'm tired of being broke, so I'm gonna hold on to it and I'm gonna stop doing the things that got me to success instead of doubling down. Did, did your family or current circle of friends ever give you a hard time about being an entrepreneur, about being a business? Why don't you just get a regular job? Why don't you just get a real job? Or whatever that oh, yeah. makes sound like, yeah? Oh, yeah. You know, they all talk shit. They all, they all, they all <laughs> you know, you're a fool, you know, go get a real job, you know, give it up, it's not gonna work, yeah. you know, it's not easy, who do you think you are? You know, all that nonsense. But fortunately, I didn't listen to anybody. I mean, at the end of the day, you gotta believe in yourself. Too many people don't. A lot of people, they don't realize it, but they don't like themselves. They don't feel like they're worth it, and they're not even aware of it. It's all subconscious, and the reason it's subconscious is because all their life they've been recording procrastination. They've been recording lies, you know, things that you've done and said to people and yourself. And ultimately, your subconscious mind's recording all this, so when you think, hey, I can go do this, and you give it a little time, Basically, your mind causes you to give up, causes you to make a change, but it's not a positive change. And mainly, it's because you're only going to get what you think you deserve. Powerful stuff, man. How, how do you, uh, okay, me and you resonate in this area, family life. My wife and I were a blended family. I had three kids. 
before we got married. She had a kid before she got married, and we have one together. <laughs> you said on stage today, I have six kids, four different women. I can explain. <laughs> that, was, that was a great way to present it. Yeah, because a lot of times. Because you know the judgments were coming up already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Four so, women. I mean, four, six kids from four women. What, yeah. What's the first thing you think? Right. Player, player. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, what, yeah. what is this guy? Yeah. But no, it was explainable. So I always say I have six kids from four women, but I can explain. And obviously the one, you, the, the, your current wife, you're, you have two kids together. Yeah. And you, also, you're, you were also explaining the difficulties you had or the circumstances that you're in of, uh, of having the other kids. How important is it to find a woman that understands the life of an entrepreneur? Well, it's extremely important. If, you, if, if all day long you're getting beat up, then you go home and get beat up, yeah. it's twice as bad. Did you sniff that out when you were dating? Her? Yeah. Before you got married? Yeah. You know, but fortunately, I, my dad told me one thing one time, because I was with this girl and she broke up with me and I thought I, my whole life was going to be over. And he said it in a way that made sense to me and I, since that day, always realized, oh, okay. But what he said is, hey, if you miss the 8.15, the 8.30 will be around in a minute. Which meant, if you're waiting on the bus and the 8.15, you miss it. Chill, dude. The 8:30s coming right, right behind you. So when I it's an abundance I, mentality. By it's way. an abundance That's mentality. Scarcity. So 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 I just you know at a young age I knew that hey you know if I lose this one I'll get another one. So it develop I developed a a mindset really that that you know fear of loss. If you have a fear of loss, you're you're at a disadvantage. I didn't fear losing. Matter of fact, most people. They don't want to make a move because they fear what might happen if they fail. And I fear what might happen if I don't try. I fear what might happen if I don't succeed. Too many people are afraid to let go of what they have to reach for what they want. And it makes no sense if you really think about it. Like you, you're sitting there with your life, your wife, your kids, your circumstances, and let's say you're not happy. And I want to go reach for these, but I don't, but I don't want to risk this. Well, this is something you don't want, but you're, you're afraid to let it go to go, re, you know, reach for something you do want. So once someone understands that, and I'm not talking about blow out your wife, but your wife needs to be on the same page. And at the end of the day, if my wife was not on the same page, I probably would have blown her out. What happens to somebody right now saying, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be in business, but the current relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, one doesn't want to commit to the life of an entrepreneur to actually build a business, it, it puts you in a rock and a hard place. What then? Depends on your perspective. Again, I mean, what do you want to do? It's yeah. all, it all boils down to a decision. Yeah. You know, if I decide, hey, I'm going to go after this, yeah. and the girl I'm with doesn't want to go after that, yeah. well, make a choice. This or the girl. So if, 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 if I were educating someone watching this and they're, they're in a relationship that they're not real sure about, but they're damn sure where they want to go, I'd set my wife down or my significant other down and I would say, here's where I want to go. I would love for you to go there with me. Are you down? And if they're not, yeah. I'd leave them. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's what happened to me, man. People are so worried about people leaving their lives. Like again, I love this person. Well, if you knew this person would hold you back from what you really want in life, yeah. would you really stay with that person? And if that person truly loved you and truly supported you and truly was your match, yeah. they wouldn't stop you, they would support you, they would back you, they would support everything, everything you needed to do to get there. And if they didn't understand, again, talk to them, communicate. But ultimately, if they're just like, look, I'm not down with that, Next. That's what I would do. Gotcha. Gotcha.